Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Welcome to Ahkam SOS, the show that discusses religious duties and practices by His Eminence, the Grand Ayatollah Sayyid Salik Shirazi. I'm your host, Mohsin Shah, and joining me as always is Sheikh Ali Ma'ash. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikhna. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. Sheikhna, let's move our discussion onto an issue where there's no water for wudu or for ghusl. What does one do in that situation? Inshallah. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وصلى الله على محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين. Well, in such case that there is no uh, availability of the means of wudu, i.e., the water, for example, and um, Allah subhanahu wa taala had made a replacement for the wudu. Um, and instead of for the wudu, you can do something else called tayammum. Uh, as the hadith says by the Prophet sallallahu The earth is the place for uh, prostration, sujood, and for purifying the oneself. Tahur. So the earth is another way that we can use it for the purpose of doing uh, the tahara and uh, for the purpose of the praying and so forth. So tayammum is instead of wudu. When we have uh, situations that we cannot use water for any reason, given reason by the shara, then we can actually switch to using tayammum. Shaykh, now you mentioned that there's a hadith in regards to tayammum, but what about the Qur'an? Because the Qur'an mentions wudu, does it actually talk about tayammum at all? Uh, the Holy Quran also speaks about the tayammum in the uh, Surah Al Ma'idah, uh, verse 6. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I'll just take the part which we need for the, uh, for the tayammum. فَلَمْ تَجِدُوا مَاءً فَتَيَمَّمُوا صَعِيدًا طَيِّبًا If you don't find water, then uh, replace it with and switch to uh, tayammum. A pure and a clear um, um, the means of tayammum. Then the, the verse says, بِوَجُوهِكُمْ وَأَيْدِيَكُمْ Then wipe um, Your face. With the face and, and both hands. So the ayah there, talking about tayammum, is mentioning wiping. The, the word is wamsahu, um, correct? Whereas with wudu in the ayah it says فَغْسِلُوا As in to wash the face. And wash ADAKUM. Exactly, because uh, with regard to Tayammum, you're not going to use any means of water or liquid. In Tayammum, you're going to be using only clay or soil and such like. So, what you get out of Tayammum is possibly small particles of, of dust. Okay. Uh, and the only thing you can do is just to wipe it on the face and both hands. So, it's only to do with wiping, uh, there's no washing at all because it's, it's actually replacing the wudu, the washing So, is tayammum only used when there's no water available? Is that the only circumstances or there's other situations you are allowed to do tayammum? Well, there are seven uh, criteria for the one to be able to switch from wudu to tayammum um, The first one is when you have no water available to use and of course obtaining water let's say it's not possible at all let's say the one is traveling from one country to another um, you're in the middle of the road uh, desert or, or, or jungle or anything else there's no water available uh, in this case you can actually switch to tayammum of course um, the one should make his efforts and um, try to find water first. You know, you can't just switch straight away. Oh, there's no water, khalas. I just switch to tayammum, pray and khalas. No, you have to make sure that you put reasonable efforts to find water. And, um, but if somebody failed to find the water after his attempts and searches, then they can actually sw switch to uh, tayammum and do the tayammum and pray. Any other situations? With regard to the same 
criteria which is about not being able to find water. Uh, the Sayyid also mentions another issue here, a mas'ala, that if you have a small amount of water, let's say a cup of water, and this cup of water um, is enough for you to perform the wudu, you know, I mean, uh, this is very enough, more than enough to do the wudu with this cup of water. It's, you're not allowed to throw this away and do tayammum because it's haram. But if somebody does such thing, well, now we, we, you are in a position and situation that you have lost water. Now your hukum and subject changes. So now you can do the tayammum, of course, but you have done sin. Now the next criteria is when there is an excuse that you cannot actually reach the water. There are reasons that prevents the one to get the water, especially those who live in villages and remote areas uh, away from the cities, um, living in forests, for example, in, in deserts and so forth, where they have very uh, restricted access to water. So let's say there's a stream of water nearby the village and there are beasts and animals uh, such as lion and so forth uh, around that stream and it's really difficult and dangerous for the one to go and get water. In this situation, uh, you can actually switch to tayammum and do tayammum and pray um, because the situation is difficult. Even if it's, let's say, it's extremely cold, let's say you live uh, somewhere close to the North Pole or South Pole, for example, it's extremely cold. If you go out, uh, you might get a frostbite. It's too dangerous. In this case, if you have a clay or soil, you can also do um, the tayammum instead of water, although it's outside, but it's difficult to reach. Now, the um, third criteria is when the use of water is harmful, especially for those who are elderly, those who are in uh, illness situation and they cannot use the water due to the uh, skin infection or burns and so forth. If this is a situation and it is a real situation, I mean, I mean um, let's say uh, the doctors would advise not to, let's say, use the water for a whole month, for example, uh, for the situation of burns and so forth, then the one can switch to, um, to use uh, Tayammum instead of water when it's harmful on uh, the body of, of that person. Now, let's move to the next criteria, which is number four, and it is the fear of thirst. Okay. Again, you are in a situation in a drought land and um, there is no access to water. You have a very little water left for yourself, for your family. And even those who live in villages for their animals, for example, that if you don't give them the water, they would die, for example, or get an illness and so forth. In this case, um, you must do tayammum and keep and reserve the water for the purpose of drinking. Okay. So the life of the humanity or even the animals as well, as I said, it says, it's also respected and protected. So... You keep that water for drinking only. You don't use it for the wudu because you need to, for the drink. And you switch to the imam straight away. Now, the fifth criteria with this regard is when there's a shortage of water for washing. As you well know that if the one wants to perform a prayer, he must be in purity in terms of his body and clothes. So if there's najasa and impurity on the body or the clothes, he must make sure that he washes them and purify them, and then enter into the salah and begin his, his prayers. In such cases where there's short availability of water for washing, now you have two options. Either I use this water to purify my body, which is najis, and wash it, and lose the water, or I keep the water, I do the wudu with it, uh, but I, ha I will remain with the najasa on my body. And close. So the Sayyid says here that, well, uh, what is important here is the purity of the body and the clothes. So you take this little, little water remained, you purify your body, the najasa, you remove them and the clothes as well, and 
because you don't have any more water available and access to, you switch to tayammum. So you do tayammum and you pray with a pure body and clothes. So tahara is the main exactly. issue. There's no the, say, point. the Sayyid prioritizes the tahara mm -hmm. first and then uh, you switch to tayammum. So that's important. Awesome. Exactly. Now the sixth criteria with regard to the tayammum is that you have to make sure that like the uh, other ahkam in wudu, for example, and ghusl, that the water that you use must not be usurped. Okay. You must have the permission to use the water um, in, in ghusl, to use the water in uh, wudu, and to use that soil or clay or such like or rock for the tayammum with the permission if somebody owns these uh, things. For example, if you go to somebody's farm or somebody's house without permission, you must make sure that you do the tayammum and you're allowed to use these particles and um, uh, means of tayammum. Otherwise, the tayammum will be void and batil, uh, uh, like the wudu and ghusl. Um, the last uh, criteria with regard to tayammum is when the time is too short. Again, um, the example would be usually for the morning prayer, the Fajr prayer, when the one wakes up, um, let's say only five minutes remaining for the sunrise, and he's in the state of, let's say, Janaba, and he wants to do tayammum instead of the usul of Janaba, or even if it's really short, as I've mentioned in the last episode about the wudu and tayammum, that you switch even to the tayammum instead of wudu, when you have only, let's say, two minutes left to the sunrise. So straight away tayammum, which is faster than the wudu, and then you start your prayer straight away. So, Shaykh, now what is the actual method and the technique of performing tayammum? Well, um, tayammum is also part of the ibadah and worship. And again, it requires niyyah and intention uh, to get close and near to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. With this intention, uh, you begin the tayammu. So intention is very important in worships and ibadat. So the first criteria is intention. The second criteria is to strike both hands on a valid surface, which I'll mention, inshallah, in the next episode that on what materials we can actually do the tayammum. So strike the hands on, let's say, the so or soil or the clay. For now, okay, so the clay. Yes, and, and then you raise your both hands, and then you begin to wipe uh, the forehead only. So from the, where the hairline grows, all the way down, and over the eye eyebrows and to the top of the nose. Okay. So you end up to the top of the nose, okay. that's the limit for uh, the um, tayammum, mm -hmm. unlike the wudu, yes. to the end of the chin. Yes. And the third criteria is to actually wipe both hands. So after wiping the forehead, the full and all the forehead, you wipe um, the right hand with the bottom of the left hand and then you wipe the left hand with the bottom of the right hand from the wrist. That's mm -hmm. important. That you actually begin from the wrist and all the way down. Awesome. So t talk me through it, Sheikh. So first thing I do is I, I strike my hands on the surface. Exactly. Now I'm going to have dust on there. Do I yes. keep the dust or am I allowed to? Oh, you can just... Okay, so I brush it off. So I've, exactly, yes. I've done the near intention. I slam it down, take off dust. And then I go from what my hairline exactly, down like yes. this to the top of my nose like that. Exactly. Okay. But you have to make sure that it covers the, all the forehead and the eyebrows as well. The eyebrows as well. So Everything. like, like yeah. that. And, yeah. And then you all end right. up on your exactly top so of just the. So just the top over here. No. And then exactly. from there like that and like that. Ah, That's, That's it. That's it. Yeah. Is that That's right? It. Yeah. Thank you very much, Sheikh. Now, but can I do this also for ghusl or is it just for wudu only? For the ghusl, you just have to add another action which means you have to strike again for the second time. Okay. Both hands, after you have wiped your forehead, the complete forehead, and both hands, you strike again the soil or, uh -huh. the, or the clay. You strike again with both hands, and you just wipe the right and the left, and that's it. Now okay. you have the um, uh, tayammum instead of 
غسل. غسل. It's just you add another action and which is the second wiping on both okay. hands. Okay, so, so we started like this, right? Exactly. And we did this. Exactly. And then we did this. I did this. And then you're saying, got to strike one more time. Second time, yes, exactly. And then like that, and like that. And now that. This, is, this is instead of ghusl. So tayammum instead of ghusl. Can I pray salah with this? So for example, I woke up in the morning, I was in Junub, wasn't much time for Fajr. Three, four minutes left for Fajr. I know I can't do also. Can I do this for the Junub? Exactly. This is this, and pray this my is, salah. Exactly. This this type of tayam is for the ghusl and instead of ghusl, where you have only short term, as I've mentioned and described in the beginning of the uh, episode, that if let's say somebody wakes up only five minutes before the sunrise, uh -huh. and he's in the state of Junub, and there's no let's say. Um, time to actually do the ghusl. The ghusl takes time to mm -hmm. go to the bath, the shower, and so forth. So makes the intention of that this, uh, this, this um, tayammum is better than ghusl. Instead of ghusl, ta'ala. And he strikes twice. So the first one to do, as you mentioned, and then this, the second strike, both hands. And then he begins his salah straight away. So okay. uh, after, of course, if he's got the time to actually clean up the areas which are najis uh, quickly and then he begins his salah with the tayammum badal and instead of ghusl thank you very much and thank you to our viewers for joining us on this discussion um, if you have any questions in regards to tayammum or any other sort of ihqam please send them to the contact details provided and inshallah the sheikh will be addressing them on other episodes until next time look after water assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh